If you're an online course creator, an expert, a consultant, a coach, anything like that, and you're a little bit confused when it comes down to actually picking the tools and the strategy to build your online business, this video is going to bring you a lot of clarity. Hey guys, John here from IncomeMesh.com coming at you once again. This is a video response to the comment that I'll put up around here from Jacobo Boscolo. Thank you for the comment, Jacobo. He asks, John, could I ask you also the downside of this solution? And the solution he's referring to is using your WordPress website to build your business using Thrivecart as a checkout solution and wishlist member, or really any membership plugin as your protection options to hide your courses, your products, whatever your services are within your WordPress website. And that's a fantastic question because in a lot of my reviews, I show you exactly how to set it up step by step. But in that time, there's not really enough time to talk about all the little nuances or even the bigger picture about what you're doing and if there are any downsides along the way. So in this video, I'm going to clear that all up by sharing with you six different pros and cons of using a WordPress based solution using plugins and things like this, like I mentioned in my previous videos, all linked down below. So we'll talk about that and we'll also contrast it against what I also use oftentimes with clients who I want to make sure that I can provide a really steady rock solid solution using an all in one solution. The one that I use when I'm working with clients and I also use with some side businesses on my own is Kartra. There's plenty of videos about each one of the solutions down below. So we're not going to talk about each one individually. I'll let you guys do that research. But in this video, we're going to dive right into the six different pros and cons that you should consider when you are setting up your own business. All right. So number one, a pro in the WordPress camp is that WordPress is going to save you money over time. So let's walk through a couple of different kind of cost lists. I'll pop the cost lists up somewhere around there. So with the WordPress solution, you're gonna be looking at the following costs when you're first getting started. So you'll need hosting to get everything all set up. And so you're looking at about $90 per year to get your Bluehost hosting all up and running. You'll also need wishlist member to protect all of that content that's running right now with a fantastic deal for $49 for life for three websites. So you really can't beat that. That's pretty much giving it away. Uh, you'll also need Thrivecart, which is your one time fee shopping cart solution, allows you to sell the upsells, the downsells, the sales funnels, the integrations. It does a lot of cool stuff. That is also $690 for life, the pro version for life. It gives you affiliate program, it gives you a ton of things. I also have some specific exclusive bonuses for Thrivecart. If you check down below the Thrivecart bonus link, uh, you can learn more about that solution. If you decide this is the right stack for you, be sure to check that out. Now to actually build out the pages, build out the sales page, the thank you pages, the email lead captures, the quizzes, all the cool things you'll need to enhance the functionality of your WordPress website. I love Thrive Themes. They're fantastic. They let you do whatever you want to do. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's $228 per year for their license, and that's up to 25 websites. So you can really kind of go nuts with that as well. And then you'll need an email marketing platform to kind of hook it all together and, and make it all kind of turn it into a funnel and make it work uh, for a good starter solution that is also cost effective and it can still grow with you quite well is MailerLite. Um, as an affiliate, I could be recommending way more expensive tools, but I honestly feel that MailerLite gives you that awesome value, that bang for your buck, and it gives you good performance as well. 10,000 subscribers, if that's about your list size, you'll be looking at $420 per year. Okay, so that's kind of the all in cost. You're going to have $739 up front with $737 recurring year after year. That's on the WordPress side. The Kartra side, it's pretty simple. You simply say, how many leads do you have? It's 10,000. So that's going to be $1,788 per year recurring. I'll pop that somewhere here, I guess. So all in, you're looking at more with Kartra, more than double the annual fee on Kartra versus the WordPress stack. Uh, but also, it's only the one fee. You don't have the upfront fee and the uh, annual fee. So a solid win for WordPress on the cost side. Now, tip number two is actually a con on WordPress is that the monetary cost is really only half the battle. <laughs> There's also the you know men mental cost, the, the taxing of knowing, hey, is MailerLite talking to WordPress and does it integrate with this solution? And if I set up that, does it do everything? You know, every time there's a plugin update, it's not always the end of the world. I know some people make it seem like it's the end of the world, but the more complexity you bring into your process, the more legs there are that might have issues. 
So if you fancy yourself not a technical person, uh, be aware that when you do run things with WordPress, uh, the cost is going to be not only in, in what you pay, but also in what it takes for you to kind of make sure everything stays smooth and steady and also doesn't like bog down the performance of your website. Sometimes separation is nice. All right, so on to tip number three is customization. So the pros here clearly go to WordPress because with WordPress, you have the ability to pick and choose each component within the stack. So let's say, for example, you don't like MailerLite. You wish you had active campaign because they have cool features like Facebook Pixel custom audience integration and they have on-site messaging and some of the cool fancier things. You can pretty quickly say bye-bye MailerLite hello, active campaign, and bring in whatever you need for your business. If you don't like um, Thrive's landing page builder, which if you don't, you're crazy, uh, you can use something else and, and use whatever makes sense for you. So definitely a pro in that side because on Kartra, if you go with Kartra, you have to be willing to accept what they have, right? It's an all-in-one solution. You get what you pay for and, and, and that's that. Um, you know, my wife as well, you know, we've, we've built a really respectable business, in my opinion, in our opinion, um, using Teachable, which is a similar type of all-in-one solution. Uh, and there are pros and cons, and you just have to go with it. You just have to live with it, right? But yeah, there are times we wish that Teachable could do things that it currently doesn't. But at the end of the day, tip number four is that that customization isn't always beneficial. You know, sometimes let's say you swap out tool A for tool B. Well, now does tool B integrate in the same way that tool A did? And if you bring in, let's say a calendar booking system into your process, is it going to know where they came from? Are you going to have a central dashboard to know that, hey, this person has this tag, they saw that web page, they watched that video, and they bought this product? Or do you have to go and look at four different systems to be able to get together that picture to know what's going on inside of your funnel. You know, this is no joke. My wife and I were both industrial and systems engineers. We make Excel cry. We just, we beat that thing up. And oftentimes with our existing systems, we have to export out sales data, export out teachable data, export out convert kit data, export out a ton of data from a ton of different systems, do some pivot tables, some V lookups, all this geeky stuff that people like us like to do to be able to answer sometimes a simple question. And that is a little bit frustrating. So that customization and the interchangeable parts of WordPress can be a downside as well. So that's tip number four is that you want to make sure that not only can you get best in breed, but the kind of whole is greater than the sum of its parts. All right, tip number five, and this is a pro on the WordPress side, is extendability. And this is kind of a little bit different than the customization side before, because let's say you like the stack, you know, the things we talked about before, MailerLite, Thrive Themes, all that good stuff. You like it, you're good with it, you run with it. Six months later, hey, your people are begging for a community and they don't want to do Facebook groups. They don't want to just email thread or do a Slack channel. You can add a forum onto your website because you're on WordPress. You can start selling physical products if they ask for that. You can start doing special membership things because you can always find a plugin to serve that need, right? They want to do drop shipping, add drop shipping, go nuts, go hog wild. WordPress has over 50,000 plugins in their repository. There are probably triple, quadruple, quintuple that amount on third-party marketplaces. So there's unlimited extendability when you live in the WordPress ecosystem. With Kartra, you get Kartra. That's what you get. You can sell digital products. You can sell services. You can sell consulting. Uh, you can still f integrate with a few uh, physical product shippers, but you get what they give you, and that's it. Unless you want to start adding on and getting away from the all-in-one solution, which I urge my clients to try to not do that because I want them to be in control and feel good about what's, what's going on. So tip number six is again, kind of the reverse on that. The extendability of WordPress is great, but tip number six is, should you? Should you spread yourself too thin and start extending out your platform? Because what ends up happening sometimes is as you add on more functionality, as you, as you add on more features, a few things can happen. One, site performance. If you start adding all the stuff, your site can start to get a little bit slower, feel a little bogged down. Sometimes uh, it just won't load <laughs> if something doesn't go quite right or people surge over into your forum or whatever the case might be. A good problem to have, by the way. And if your site starts to slow down, 
your Google search results can go down. People coming to your website might slow down. Your conversion rates on your important pages might go down. A lot of things can happen if you try to get too nutty with it and add too much into it. And that's just on like the physical site aspect of it. Also consider the mental aspect, like I touched on in number one and number two earlier above. If you start to extend yourself out too much, you know, if you have, start having dozens of products or, or a bunch of products, you can lose focus on every individual one because every product, if done correctly, should be packaged into an irresistible offer. And each irresistible offer should have a solid airtight funnel that walks people through that conversion process. And if you start to extend it out too much because you listen to every single request and try to add more onto it, it gets to where you simply can't see the forest for the trees because there's too many trees in your forest and you're stuck in that mode. So where I find the shackles of an all-in-one solution like Kartra can sometimes help those of us that happen to have ADD and happen to be a little bit uh, all over the place, solutions like that, while some can think they're very restricting, others can find liberating because it helps you focus. It helps you say, hey, this is what the platform can do. Me as, a, as an entrepreneur, I know I only have so much time in the day, so I will accept the limitations for the liberty of being able to have it up, have it running, have it consistent, and focus on the marketing, the selling, and the fulfilling of the service. All the techie stuff in the middle sometimes can be a bit of a detriment at the end of the day. All right, so that was six kind of rapid fire, different ideas, different pros and cons of using WordPress versus using an all-in-one solution. Again, if you're talking about MemberPress, not Wishlist Member, still works the same way. If you're using ClickFunnels and not Kartra, it works kind of the same way, but Kartra is better. Um, these are just some thoughts for you, right? Like if you want to talk with me, you can reach out with me down below and we can help you figure out your specific needs and your purposes. But I hope this kind of gives you some thoughts to jive through and figure out what's right for you. Now I'm going to give you three different scenarios, kind of throwing out a few different types of people in different parts of their journey and probably give you a good recommendation for where you're at. So recommendation number one. If you're a beginning blogger or an agency and you don't really have that much up and running, you might have a WordPress blog, but that's kind of about it, and you want to keep things simple, I would recommend go with Kartra. You know, pay that a slightly higher price for the clearer mindset it would give you. I think a lot of people get turned off when they see the initial price. I think it's a hundred dollars per month for their basic plan, and that can seem, you know, not achievable, not 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 cost effective for beginners. Um, think. Six months down the road, though, you know, I, I always think that you're starting a business. So if you, if you can't afford $100 a month for everything, um, you might need to reassess if you're working on a hobby or if you're working on a business. So that's one little piece of advice there. And also, as you see, um, as you add more into your WordPress-based stack, the cost can very easily become equal and also grow above that. You know, scenario number two is if you already have an email marketing platform that you're happy with, if you already have a bit of a WordPress presence going and you just want to start adding on those funnels and selling your courses or products and kind of turning it into a really scalable business, I would say go Thrive, get Thrive themes for your funnel building process, get Thrive cart to sell and do your upsells and your downsells and all that cool stuff. That stack that we talked about that's in the video down below it works really well. It's really airtight. It works solidly uh, because there's few moving parts. It's Thrive, Thrivecart, and Wishlist Member. There's really not too many pieces of the puzzle that could go wrong. I think that's a solid option. I would urge you in that case to try to keep it simple and try not to boil the ocean and try to do everything in that business model. And if you're already using a platform like a ClickFunnels or a Teachable and you find that it's just not meeting all of your needs, specifically on the selling side, I know both of those platforms have some rather strange uh, limitations around coupons or upsells and downsells and things like that, you can pretty easily bolt on Thrivecart to any of those other solutions to instantly increase your ability to sell and get more revenue over time. All right, guys, so that was a lot I just threw at you. I hope I didn't overwhelm you, and I hope I didn't confuse you further. You know, at the end of the day, you have to choose what's right for you, and I'm here for you. If you have any questions about this, as you can see, I'm doing a lot more videos where I'm helping answer people's individual questions, and I'm doing that in what I think is a very helpful way. So if you have any questions about this, if I made anything a bit muddier than it was when you first watched, please leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, do all that fun stuff you know how to do, and let me know what you think. Which solution is right for you? What's your business model? What are you doing? And 
If you've tried version A or version B and you've had a bad experience, share with us what that experience was down below. I'd love to hear and help you with that as well. If you don't know yet, I do have bonuses for both Kartra and for Thrivecart. They're both amazing products. As you can see from this video, they're not right for the same person. Each person kind of requires a different solution. So that's why I feel perfectly fine recommending both and trying to help you figure out which one is right for you. Check out the bonuses down below in the description. I hope you sign up and have a ton of success with your online business. I'm John from IncomeMesh.com signing off. Thank you guys. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.